So the transfer window is shut, and if this looks strange, it's the first video standing up at my standing up desk. Hey! Roll the intro. Apparently it's going to make me more healthy. I don't know. Hello everybody and welcome back to Football Manager 2022 with the Botafogo Rebuild Save where we are doing pretty well actually. We're back up to third position with two games in hand on Santos and only three points behind them. However, Flamengo have two games in hand on us and they are currently, what's that, six points ahead of us. So more than that, no, six points ahead of us. So they could be 12 points ahead of us. Um, well, you know, come all what may. But uh, yeah, it's really weird. Brazil is... Brazil is bonkers right everyone's been talking to me about how the brazilian league's a little bit crazy and and stuff happens and you don't really know what's going on yeah so many people play so many different games at so many different times i mean you've got like ave down here on 25 and you've got fluminese on 21 i just don't understand how in a league that has an even number of teams so many different people have played so many different games it's very crazy very crazy other thing is you can't sign a player that's already played in Serie A this year. Well, you can sign them, you just can't play them. So if they've made an appearance in Serie A and you bring them in, you can't play them because they're cup tied for the league. It's really strange until I till and think the registration opens. But anyway, it's been it's been it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But we have turned it around. We're on 48 points. We're in prime position to probably nick second, I would suggest. We need Flamengo to to really capitulate to make that to make us champions but we have been playing pretty well and if we look at the league standings how they've been going started well fell off a little bit did really well fell off a little bit starting to climb back up the table again and second would probably be a you know a good position to finish with how our season's gone so far but oh ross you said john Gidetti won't be a hit if you get him in the right system if you get him playing the right way sort out how you want it to work so that you can feed him for goals. He will score goals. Six goals in ten appearances, two assists, averaging a 7.2. He just needed to learn the team and how we were going to play and how it was all going to work. No, no, he's... Obviously, I thought he was going to be a bit of a bum as well. Just a bit of a backup and see how he got in. But, yeah. F turns out, playing him as a target forward really does help. Uh, getting him as a target forward, getting the width, getting crosses into the box... Sort of makes sense, doesn't it? It's uh, the common sense of tactics, which that five tactics tip video will be coming. I've just got to find time to record it. I'm recording this now at half past eight in the morning before I start work. So that's how manic my schedule is at the moment with work. Hence why the second channel didn't have a video yesterday either, but we'll get onto that later. Uh, anyway, so yes, John Gadetti has uh, started scoring goals, which is good. And if we have a look at the quick overview of the results, we will see that this drawing run we're on six draws in a row. Um, what we've done since then is only we've changed two things in the tactic, uh, technically three things in the tactic, but nothing dramatic. But yes, uh, John Gadetti got a brace against Flamengo, rescuing us a two-two draw. I say rescuing us. He actually put us two-one up, and then um, Mourinho scored. Not not Jose. Mourinho with an AR, not OR, OUR. But Mourinho uh, got an equaliser in the 82nd minute for Flamengo. Uh, we then, four to Zella, we played, drew 1 1, and then we made a couple of changes. 4 0, we beat Santos. They got a man sent off early doors. We scored four goals after that, which really helped. Uh, we then played Corinthians with Pedro Villarino coming on to score. And uh, yeah, this little young, young, we've got some. Decent looking youngsters. They're getting a lot more game time because of our fixture congestion. But uh, yeah, he came on, got a goal in the 31st minute um, and got us the win. 4-2, Enio got a goal against Ciara again in the quarterfinals of the cup, which was great. Put us in a good, comfortable position for that one. Uh, John Gudetti scored against Atletico Paranaense uh, with Marco Antonio, the youngster we've signed from Cruzeiro. So two new signings getting a goal. Uh, America Minerio lost to basically a John Gudetti wonder show. He got three goals and an assist, 56, 61, 69. He got a 13-minute hat trick uh, against them in the second half and assisted Janinho uh, late on as well. So 4-0 there. John Gudetti scored again against Ciara, 5-3 in the second leg of the quarterfinals of the Cup. Vinicius Lopez, Marco Antonio, Che getting on the score 
commentary as well. Lovely stuff there. Uh, we beat Kubea 1-0. Marco Antonio with a goal. We beat Avaya 3-0. Che getting two. And Henrique Luro, the, new, the young centre-back, coming on and scoring there. And Fluminese, we've just been beaten 1-0 by a goal from Vinicius Lopez, where... We rotated and rested the team a little bit because we've got Braga Nitano coming up only like four days after that. But yes, we've played Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday. And going into September, it's still going to go Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday. So games are coming thick and fast. But we are near the end of the season. We are into the Copa de Brazil semi-finals playing Flamengo, which is possibly the hardest draw we could have got. But, you know, we'll deal with that at the time but yeah the season's going pretty well i'm really enjoying um having this new club we've actually kept it brazilian heavy as well even when the transfer window opened we only bought in two foreign players um Gudetti and fiamose with santos being uh, part brazilian anyway so yeah overall it's all been it's all been pretty pretty good to be honest i'm pretty happy with it i'm pretty happy with how the quad's going you'll see that the squad looks huge we do have the uh, reserves and under 20s in here as well just to help us fill out the bench when people are tired we seem to have a bit of a fitness issue in terms of starting players that can't play multiple games in a week. Um, I, I don't want to call it Ledley King syndrome because Ledley King, Ledley King was incredible as a footballer. Don't get me wrong. But the likes of Kanu, for a 25-year-old who you know, has natural fitness 13 and stamina 12, I'd like to think he should be able to play two games in a week. He seems to really be struggling and he keeps asking for a rest, like a week's long rest. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. We can't give you a week's long rest. We're in the hunt for, you know, a Copa Libertadores spot. So, at the moment, it, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. But anyway, today we are playing Bragnatino. And I feel like I've been talking for quite a while already, which is um a little bit of an error. But we'll see. I talk quite quickly. So, I generally think that it's probably not been... It's probably been like four minutes in the video. It's probably not even been that long. But, uh, yes, we will pick the team because I've just cleared it. And uh, we'll be right back to take on the Red Bull team of Brazil. Okay, so for this one, this is how we're going to line up. We've got Everson in goal. He's coming back from a little knock, but he should be fine. He's back to full fitness in two days. And he's a goalkeeper, so he doesn't really have to do very much. And it's his right ankle. Bru a bruised shin. If you can't play with a bruised shin, you shouldn't be playing football. Uh, Fia Mose is going to start on the right. We've got Carnu, Klaus, and Jonathan Silva across the back four. Rafael is going to play as the Segundo Valente. Something we've been trialing in a couple of games and he's been doing it okay uh, Fabinho next to him Luis Fernando on the right Marco Antonio in behind Nascimento and Gudetti but we have Gudetti starting as the target forward on support out here um, and Fia Mose is playing as a wing back now not an inverted wing back and Rafael is a Segundo Volante on support so a few little changes that adapt how the system works so Rafael now doesn't push up as high, which means he's not getting in the way over here. And it also means that Fia Mose, or the right back, doesn't need to cover the centre. Um, the target forward still gives Jonathan Silva enough space to come in because he's going to drop deep and try and hold on to the ball. Also takes defenders away still, leaving space for Nascimento to run into. And we encourage the wing backs to get crosses into the target forward. And uh, that is pretty much the only change we've made. As I said, three three changes really, which is the wing back, the Segundo Volante, and the target forward is part of the shape. So overall, I'm happy with how we've been playing. I'm hoping it doesn't now ruin it because we're doing it live on camera. But uh, yeah, we've been doing we've been doing really well. We have been playing really well. The board are really happy. They've offered me a new contract, which is good. They've agreed to um, increase the training facilities, the youth facilities. Uh, they they're putting money in the right place, which is um, which is really good. Which is really good to see. And you know they're backing us at the moment. It'll be interesting to see what sort of transfer budget and wage budget etc. We get going into next year. But um, because I never trust the numbers where it says next year's transfer budget will be a minimum of, and it's like 100k, and it's like, yeah, well, we've got 19 million pounds in the bank, so of course it's going to be a minimum of 100k. But Jadson into Silviera, and we are 1 0 down, early doors. Wow, that is not the start we wanted. Uh, we're going to go to attacking, we're going to go straight off to attack, and we're going to demand more. I feel like the team talk may have been bad. Versen into Guilherme. Guilherme into Gabriel Noves. Noves just flicked it on one more to Jadsom. And Jadsom into Miguel Severia. And, uh, well, the keeper just thought he'd lie down, didn't he? Good job, Iverson. Good job. That's why we that's why we paid the big bucks for you. So you could just lie down when people shoot at you. Amazing. Cleaton in goal. Goes long with it. All the way up. Klaus, I think, wins the header. But it's still falling to Red Bull. And Silveria's in again. And Iverson this time does make the save. 
Right, come on, chaps. Come on. This is poor. Silveria swings it in, headed away at the near post by Raphael. And that's fine. That's good. Get it away. Throw in. Jonathan Silva. Into Fabinho. Back to Jonathan Silva. Whips across in. And it's headed away. Marco Antonio, the centre midfielder. I nearly said centre back, but he wasn't. He's a centre midfielder. And I feel like not sitting in a chair gives you so much more freedom to really get involved in this. It's a bloody penalty. Ref, he's gone down like a sack of potatoes. Lou Van Howe on the sideline. Oh. He's given it. He's given it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, Everson, get your bruised shin in the way of it. Put your bruised shin in the way of it. He's sent you completely the wrong way. Put it into the top corner. It's an absolutely marvellous penalty. To I'm going to berate them. I'm going to berate them and say you've been absolutely wank. You get, you play well, you wake up early, you get on camera, and it all goes wrong. Classic football manager. Classic. Absolute classic. Right, let's... Um, oh, right, let's hit those crosses into the box. Uh, let's mix them up so that we can hit John Cadetti a bit more. Um, let's go to the target forward with... I don't mind how you do it, but preferably long kicks are fine. We're going to show them inside. No, we're not. That seems to be backfiring a little bit. And we're not, yeah, we've dropped down the pressing a little bit. Right, let's mix it up a little bit. Basically get long balls up to Gudetti and get his head on it because he's an absolute giant. But, oh, 2-0 oh, down at home to Red Bull Bragitano. And Jonathan Silva's just picked up an injury. Luckily, we have Dalbert on the bench, who is a ready-made replacement. But Jonathan Silva was our best performing player. It was, in fact, he was our only good performing player on a 7.3, as uh, Breno has it for Red Bull. Back to Jadsom. Jadsom put... Oh my word, how did that not go in? I mean, somehow we're not 3-0 down from an absolute rocket from the edge of the area. Right. It looks like Bregatano have got our numbers. I'm going to say, um, do you know what? I'm going to thrash my arms again. What the hell was that? That's what we're going to get. What the hell was that? Uh, I need to change the game for us. You're, you know, you've got the ability. You've got the ability. You've got the ability. Get out there. Who's frustrated where well, you're injured? And Fiamose is, you know, he's... He's, he's, he's probably been... He's a worse signing than Gudetti, definitely. He's, he's played a few parts here and there, but he's he's a worse uh, worse signing than Gudetti, definitely. Right, Demar Moore, come on. Come on, we're 2-0 down. We're not really showing much here. We may have to mix this up a little bit. Um, we could go to the classic... I mean, Nascimento's not playing well at all. So we're going to... We're going to load in the Sunderland winning... League tactic. The 4-2-3-1. Uh, Raphael's going to go back to right back. We're going to have Raphael, Canu, Klaus, Dalbert. Fabinho, Fiamose is going to come off. Even though he's on a 6.6, .6, he's uh, he's going to come off. He's going to be replaced by Breno in there. And Gidetti is going to go straight up front. As an advance forward, I know it's a little bit obscure, but that's what he's going to do. Nascimento off for Che. And we're also going to do it, Luis Fernando for Dos Santos on the right. He's not blessed with pace, bless him. <coughs> but he um, he <coughs> is very skillful. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'll either edit those out or make them look funny. So, yeah, 20 minutes to go. We are still not doing very much here. 15 shots to their 9, 7 shots to their 6 on target. Our XG is increasing. We are just not putting the ball in the back of the net, which is a big concern in a game of football. Vinicius Lopez on up front for John Gudetti. Ten minutes to go, boys. We need You need to make something happen here. You need to make something happen here. Demar Moore, look at this. Get those numbers forward. Put him under pressure. Clayton, long clearance. He's headed it down to Miguel Silvera and Everson. I mean, he let it go behind for a corner. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't think we've really had a good highlight. Like, it looks like we've created quite a lot in terms of stats, but... Yeah, highlight-wise, we've not really done much. And it's a 2-0 loss, it looks like it's going to be, which is incredibly frustrating after, uh, I think it's eight wins on the bounce. So, there you go. We got back into it in the second half. Um, no, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. We weren't good enough. We must improve. We're third in the table, boys. You're throwing away the chance of second. Oh, look where they are. They're 11th as well. That was dreadful. Jonathan Silva's out for 12 days. 12 to 14 days. Again, this is what I mean. Fitness concern. Klaus and Carnu are two centre-backs. They're not getting rested. They can't afford to be rested. They're our starting centre-back partnership in the running part of the season. Maybe halfway. How far are we through the season? Just over halfway. So, bloody hell, how many games do we play? 
No, 38, yeah, so we are, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're just over halfway. We're just over halfway. But, right, okay, because that was an absolute shit show, we're going to go in and we are going to play the second game of the episode. So, we're going to go back to a bit of a normal structure and we'll be back to play Ciara at home. So, hopefully, we get a better win than two. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wins on the bounce and we lose on camera. Unbelievable. Okay, back for game day then against Ciara Sporting Club, who find themselves in 10th, so a similar level to uh, Braganitano, who we've just lost to. So, yes, we're going to mix up the team. We've got a few suspensions, injuries, tiredness, things like that. So, I don't know what we're going to do here. I did rest the players for a day, but it doesn't seem to have made a difference for a number of them. But, anyway, let's sort this team out. We'll be right back. Okay, this is how we're starting for this one then. Everson in goal. Fully fit now. Doesn't have a bruised shin. Uh, Raphael at right back. Enrique Lourdo and Lucas Mazenga at the back. Lucas Mazenga, I think we've touched on him before, but he's a good, good, good looking player in our reserve team. Um, he's going to step up to the first team for this game. Uh, Dalbert comes in at left back because of the uh, injury to Jonathan Silva. Breno and Romildo in the middle. Now, Romildo is someone who's been pushing to say, oh, I want a new contract and I should be a better deal and blah, 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 basically having a big old moan. And uh, so this is his chance to to show what he can do. He's had, a, I think he's had a couple of games, five appearances, 6.85. So he's not been dreadful when he stepped up, but he needs to show what he can do next to Breno. I'm just wondering, yeah, he probably would be better played in there rather than be the the ball winner. So we'll leave him in there. Luis Fernando on the right, Marco Antonio in behind, Nascimento and Gadetti up front. So we're sticking with the sort of front four that we had in the last game. Um, as you can see, knackered players all around. So so Douglas Bourget misses out, Barreto, uh, Klaus the centre-back, Carnu the centre-back does go onto the bench just in case. Uh, K1 is another centre-back who we'll probably bring on ahead of Klaus if we need to. But uh, yeah, it's... Um, I don't know. These Brazilians, man, they don't have much stamina and they seem to be picking up lots of niggly injuries, which is very irritating. Something I've never really had to deal with before. So we'll have to see uh, see how it goes. Backup goalkeeper Diego Lillo, whose name I can't really sound. It sounds like I'm having a stroke every time I say it. Um, he's uh, injured uh, 12 days. So yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, annoying. Not interesting. It's not interesting at all. It's annoying. That's what it is. Uh, this is a match we should be winning, um, is, and I'm just going to be very assertive and point the finger the whole time. Basically, I'm just like this, the whole time, just pointing at him, looking at him, square in the eyes, saying like, come on, you absolute knobbers, get out there and go and get a win, because that result last time was dreadful. I wish I could have said that whole spiel. I wish you could speak into the microphone, and it picks up what you're saying, and then it actually affects them. Yeah, because that would have been much better. Right, 14 minutes in. We've had two shots. They've had two. Um, demand more. No, not individuals. What am I doing? I'm losing my thought. It's because I'm standing up. It's the standing up. I shouldn't have stood up. What was I thinking? Trying to be healthy and better for my body at a standing up desk. Yeah, I'm standing up, but it's making the team play worse, isn't it? Right, we're going attacking. We're going attacking. What is happening here? Eight game winning streak. And now we've just lost 2-0 and we've had a whole half with no highlights. Unbelievable, Jeff. Do you know what? We're taking the game to him here. We're going, we're going for this. We're going for this. Right. Don't lose faith. We've had a few chances. Don't lose faith. But uh, wing back attack. Wing back attack. Uh, Luis Fernando is going to go inside forward on attack. We're going to just take the game to him. We're going to proper go for this. Um, Segundo Volante on attack. Th this team is crap. This team is bollocks. Right. We can get out there, get at them. And they've made a change. They've taken Z Roberto off. Someone that I'm scouting who's one of the top goal scorers in the league this year, Lucas Mazenga, up from the reserves. And uh, yes, he makes it 1-0. Lovely. There we go. Take the game to him. Really take it to him. Take it. I don't like it up him. Lucas Mazenga, great header there at the near post. Actually floated over the guy that we normally aim at. And Lucas Mazenga was loitering behind him just to nod it in. For no, it's not a penalty. So it's outside the box. It's outside the box. It's outside the box. It's outside the box, everyone. Just calm down. No penalty, see? Outside the box. Yellow card for Richardson, though, which sounds like uh, the son of Richard. Dalbert, in it goes. It's not a bad delivery. Headed away by Giovane, and we will get a throw in. Whether we see the highlight from it or not, I don't know. No, we won't. But, uh, again, John, G oh, John Gadetta is slowly getting into the game a little bit more. Uh, Raphael is absolutely knackered and on a yellow card. On a 6.9, he's not playing brilliantly. He is club captain now. Uh, we'll bring on Fiamose just to play in there a little bit. John Gadetti, we could take off and bring on Ennio out here. 
Lots of pace in Enyo. He's got lots and lots of pace. Pace is probably our friend. Pace is probably our friend. So Enyo comes out here. Uh, he'll be an inside forward as well on attack. And we're going to just keep taking the game to him. So John Gadetti comes off. That's not here or there. That's not too bad. Yeah, we're going to keep working the ball into the box. Um, but yeah, we've had 14 shots to there too. But we have now just taken off our big talisman target man forward and our club captain in Raphael. So hopefully we can uh, not throw this game away. As Delvino puts it in, Vitor Silva. In oh my God. Why do we concede such good goals all the time? We concede goals that have an XG of like 0 0.4 every single game. It's so irritating. How do you stop shots like that? We close him down. He gets a little bit of space. It's a wonderful finish. Are you pissing me? Are you absolutely pissing me? 0 0.26 there, XG. That was not, not even 0 0.4, that shot. It was not even 0 0.4. Absolutely unbelievable. Dalbert, Lucas Mazenga, Dalbert again. Play it up the line. You've got people there. Antonio, he's drifted wide. Up to Ennio. Use your pace. Crosses it in. Nascimento, come on. Right, 21st goal of the season for Nascimento. That's why he's got his own district named after him in the City Skyline save because he does look really, really good. Right, Luis Fernando is going to come off. We're going to bring on Giovanni Dos Santos out on that side. Again, a lack of pace, but his technical ability is pretty good. So he should be able to get this done. Fia Moses, come on, got a yellow card and has got a worse rating than Raphael when he was fully fit and Raphael wasn't. We won! 2-1, good. I mean, we absolutely battered them. How have we not got more goals? Right, um, I'm very happy we got the result despite not being at our best. I think that's what you can do. Luckily, it's not a two-game losing episode. We just, look, look, we deserve, it was no, no, no less than we deserved. We deserve that. I don't normally answer the press conferences, but... We just have, right, we're a point behind Santos with a game in hand. So, a crucial game coming up there. Uh, we could get caught by Sao Paulo, though. They've got two games in hand, and we're only four points ahead of them. Palmeiras have got four games in hand on us, man. That's 12 points. They could go above us as well. Oh, my word. What is wrong with this league? Why are people playing so many different, different numbers of fixtures? It's absolutely bonkers. It really is bonkers. I think the season must be shortened. Or something, because I know the World Cup's in, like, November this year. Are we finished? Yeah, we have to finish the season before the World Cup starts. Which is obviously not... I mean, how many of these players are actually going to the World Cup? How many Brazilian players that play in Brazil go to the World Cup? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Anyway, it's not a complete failure, this episode. We do actually get a... Uh, a good win, uh, well, a win, I wouldn't say it was a good win, it was a win, but we do get the win. So thank you so much for watching, uh, annoying that we lost to Blagonitano. We will be back for the second leg against Flamengo, unless the first leg is a complete whitewash. We'll come back for the second leg against Flamengo in the Cup semi-final in the Cup of Brazil. And uh, yes, we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like. Let me know what you think of the stand-up desk. I feel like it's hindered our... It's hindered us as a manager, but it's allowed me to be a lot more, you know, movable. Move. I'm still only moving the top half of my body. Like, this is my legs moving. Like that. What am I doing? Right, see you in the next one. See you later. I'm out. Cheers.